Hey y'all, today we are gonna be doing two very opposite unique things. We are going to be planting seed potatoes and I'm gonna be showing you how I prune my roses after Valentine's Day, prepping them for the new growth season. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and drop me a comment below. Let me know if you pruned your roses yet. Let me know if you started your seed potatoes. Let me know what you're looking forward to growing the most. Okay, so we're getting ready to start some potatoes. I got this pack from, I believe Lowe's, Sea Potatoes Red, White, and Blue Blend. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna open these up and see what we have and then decide how we wanna divide them up. Okay, so this particular bag of sea potatoes comes with two white potatoes, two red potatoes, and one blue potato. So what you're doing on the potatoes is you're looking for eyes. This obviously right there is an eye, this big one right here, but this is an eye, this is an eye, this is an eye, okay? It's very obvious to see the ones that are already majorly grown. This is an eye, but you can see these little ones, two more eyes, another one right here. Okay, does that make obvious for you guys on the eyes, how where those are standing out? Obviously the bigger ones are easier to see. Now, I could just plant these potatoes just like this. I could just plant the whole thing in there, no problem, easy peasy. Or you can cut them up to get more seedlings from here. So you can see an eye right there and then these eyes right here. So basically I could make a cut across the potato right here and then I would have two starts to a potato. So let me go ahead and do that and show y'all what that looks like. Okay, so we have this guy. So I've got I, I, I. I can go ahead and make a cut right there. And I'm trying to do this one-handed, y'all, so there you go. All right, so I can make the cut right there. And then I've got this as a start, one plant, and then this as a start, one plant, okay? Now, these are the foliage come, trying to come up. This is not the root, so you definitely don't want to plant it down like this. You want to plant it up. You want the foliage going up, the eye reaching for the sky. So remember that, the eye reaching for the sky. And then the potato has all the nutrients in it that is needed um, to start these plants off. So you would plant it just like this, and we would make sure that it's um, planted below the soil line. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut these up, and then once they're all cut up, let me show you what they look like. Okay, first off, how awesome does that purple-blue potato look? Super cool. Okay, so these are all cut up. They each have at least one or two eyes. Tip, I prefer two eyes um, if possible. And then what you could do, um, a lot of people just plant this right away. I prefer to allow my potatoes to have like 24, 48 hours to scab over so that we don't have any molding or um, anything like that. We don't want these to rot. So I like them to be able to scab over, kind of like what you would do with like a succulent. Give it 24 to 48 hours to scab over before you plant them. Okay, so let's get this, these potatoes planted. This is a plastic uh, barrel container that I pick up from Lowe's. They're usually around $20. I like the aesthetic for my garden. I think they look really nice. They're lightweight, so it's easy to move around and then of course dump out when I have um, the potatoes. I've seen a lot of people utilizing laundry baskets lately, which is a really great cost-effective way. I just really enjoyed the aesthetic of this look and I think it goes really well with my garden. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting about four inches of soil at the bottom of the container. So we have our potatoes that we cut up a um, little over 24 hours ago and so that they each had at least two eyes on each thing. Remember, I am planting a red, white, and blue mix that included blue potatoes, white potatoes, and red potatoes that I got from Lowe's. I'm going to be planting them with the leaf stems going up, the eyes going up. I'm gonna be spreading them out throughout this whole container. You can absolutely spread this out, amount out through multiple containers. However, that's not how I like to do it. I literally only devote one container to potatoes each year, and that's what they get. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in and then I'll show you what the next step is.
Okay, so I've got all of the potatoes in. I've got them where their eyes are pointing upwards, wherever there's any growth. And now I'm gonna cover them with an additional three inches of soil. So the next step is to water them in and then you are good to go as they continue to grow up out of the soil once they get two to three inches above the soil i'll put another layer of soil and allow the soil to build up over time and continue to cover the greens all the way until the edge of the pot once we reach the edge of the pot with soil we allow the greens just to keep going and going and going at that point but like i said every time you see the greens start to sprout through go ahead and add another couple inches of of soil and that will build more and more roots down low and of course more roots equals more potatoes. Okay, so let's talk about pruning roses. I don't typically prune roses until after February 14th after Valentine's Day. Um, at that time is when I start to see leaves showing up, which is exciting. So pruning roses is not as hard as it seems. A lot of people freak out about cutting their roses. I just think you need to think rationally about this. We want the center of the plant to have lots of airflow to prevent disease. So any branches that are going towards the center, we wanna cut and redirect, all right? So there's one right there that I'm cutting and redirecting. Wherever I make a cut, since this one was going this way, if I make a cut, it will automatically go the other way, okay? And so I'm also gonna remove any other branches that I see that are aiming towards the inside of the plant. Okay. Next, I'm gonna look for branches that I see that are dead brown, don't look good. See me cutting off these, those are just kind of a grayish tone. Here's another one that's kind of redirecting back inside. This rose right here is called Happy Go Lucky. It's a beautiful yellow rose. I'm also gonna cut some of these taller, higher stems um, just because they are getting a little wonky on this. And I don't know if I want these really tall, big, crazy stems as of yet. So I'm going to cut some of this back. I typically like to cut my rows back by about um, a third of the direction. I'm also going to cut by, back any areas that I think where I've got too many stems together. Remember the whole thing I'm thinking about this. Here's a dead tip, a brown tip. I'm going to cut that off. The thing to think about this is you're thinking about airflow. All right. And where I'm not really thinking about lots and lots of blooms, I'm thinking about healthy, good quality blooms, all right? I'm gonna cut off some of these tips. If I get to an area where it's got like a little bit of green leafing, like this guy right here, see how the green shoot is coming back this direction? I actually wanna recut that because that's gonna grow back into the plant like that. So I need to cut it and force it go the other direction. Just take your time. I think this whole one is dead right there. Take your time, enjoy the process. Once again, I've got little buds right here and this little bud is pointing back in. So I'm gonna clip that out and the next bud, um, bud is pointing out, which is definitely what I want. Probably gonna clip that guy, cause that guy's going back in. Here. A lot of people panic about clipping roses. I try not to stress about it, you guys. It's gardening supposed to be fun. If it doesn't go well this year, well, then you can make changes for next year. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. No big deal. 
enjoy. All right, I got a lot of open room right here in the center. Ooh, I'm gonna take that guy. You see this guy going back towards the middle? I'm gonna take him out. Looks good. All right, so I feel good about this. The next thing I'm gonna do is add some fertilizer to the base of this um, rose, and we'll go from there. Look at that big old weed. There we go, let's do another one. Okay, I believe this variety is called Jump for Joy. And it is like a peachy apricot color. All right, once again, I'm gonna start by looking at stems that are going towards the center. I'm gonna remove those. This guy's going towards the center. I'm also gonna remove situations like, let me move that chondra there okay you see how this branch is kind of crossing this branch go ahead and remove that we don't need to be competing or strangling each other for space same thing over here see how this is gonna remove that to give it a little bit more space i'm gonna remove any kind of center growths I'm gonna take this whole thing, because that branch is going that way, which I think is great. Um, I think I'm gonna take down to there on that. I'm gonna take this tip. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this tip, because I want the portion that's growing out that way. This one right here, you can see this bud is starting that direction, but the bud right underneath it is going out away from the center. So I'm gonna cut right above the bud that's going out away from the center. I'm gonna remove some of these center ones. Come over here, take some tips off. This seems a little squirrely right here. You know, I have a lot of like, super deep rationale behind cutting, trimming back um, roses, but I'm also not a master gardener or a rose gardener of any type. <clears throat> you guys know me for just being an at-home gardener. And so this is a part of the process of an at-home gardener. Just doing what works for an at-home gardener situation. Looks like I got some dead branch down there. Okay. Looks good. I'm going to add some fertilizer and then this guy is good to go for the season. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today, planting these seed potatoes and pruning my roses, getting them ready for the new season. Like I prefaced before, I'm not a master gardener. I'm just an at-home gardener on a small plot of land doing the best she can. So a lot of these are my own rationale that I've learned from others over the year and what works best for my situation. Just because it's what works best for me isn't doesn't mean it's gonna be what works best for you. So I always encourage you to keep exploring, sharing, letting us know what you love about pruning roses or any secrets you have for seed potatoes. And as always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.